Hello and welcome to EU TV Sports Update. We'll be looking at the latest sports news from Evangel University and around the region. I'm Spencer Barnes. We'll also look at college football across the nation and check out the latest happenings in professional sports. I'm Josiah Mann and this is Sports Update on EU TV. Well, Spencer, it's been a busy week for Evangel oh, Sports. Uh, we finally had a football game yeah, from Evangel Valor, and once again, we win. What was the score on that? 24-14. 24-14. That's a pretty good score. Were there any highlights from the game that you wanted to mention? Oh, maybe? Man, you had to be there. It's just offense is explosive. You're just doing great. Yeah. Um, speaking of football, Evangel went on the road this week to face Ottawa University, hoping to keep their undefeated record alive. The Valor have been labeled as a second-half team, and they showed it again on Saturday. At halftime, Evangel was up 10-0 and came out in the second half ready to play, winning 27-14. This marks the 16th consecutive regular season win in a row for the Valor, who are ranked number 19 in the latest NIAA coaches poll. Evangel University's Valor volleyball team extended their winning streak with a commanding 3-0 victory over Bethany College this past Saturday. The Valor improved to 15-2 on the season and 3-0 in conference play, while Bethany dropped to 5-9 overall. The Swedes opened strong in the first set, but Evangel quickly turned the tide with key performances from Lauren Pritchett and Bella Wakeley, securing a 25-18 win. Evangel's dominance continued with a 7-0 run in the second set, fueled by Bethany's off offensive struggles, allowing the Valor to cruise to a 25-10 victory. In the final set, the Valor de delivered their most efficient performance, hitting .500 with 16 kills, wrapping up the match 25-12. Standouts included Bella Wakeley with 12 kills, Kenna Wise with 16 digs, and Viviana Sanchez contributing seven blocks. The Evangel men's soccer team went on the road this weekend for a conference matchup against Bethany College. The Valor played strong and won with a commanding 3-0 victory. Rem Harmsworth scored his fourth goal of the season, and Andrea Fincato scored his fifth. This marks the seventh win of the season for Evangel and brings their record to seven wins, one loss, and one draw. Cross-country excitement heated up at the Chili Pepper Festival in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the Evangel Valor men's and women's team competed against a highly competitive field. The women's team, led by Macy Kopp, placed 22nd overall, with Kopp finishing 105th and just missing an NAIA top 10 performance. Teammate Julia Rust followed closely behind on the men's side. Ethan Montgomery led Evangel's charge, finishing 6th in the 8K race, propelling the team to an impressive third place finish among NAIA and Division II competitors. Montgomery was backed by strong runs from Joshua Rust and Nathan Hawbaker, who finished 16th and 28th, respectively. The Chili Pepper Festival, featuring to NCAA programs like Texas and Arkansas, remains one of the premier cross-country events in the nation. Well, Evangel Sports are doing very well across the board this week. Yeah, I would agree. The volleyball team has been playing exceptional. Um, Bella, uh, Bella Pritchett and, I'm, I'm sorry, Bella Wakeley and Jessica Pritchett and Viviana Sanchez are really standout key players on the volleyball team. Yeah. The cross-country has actually... Uh, absolutely doing exceptional as well with these wins and with these times on the runs. Yeah, across the board doing very well as a school. Coming up next, I'll be here with tennis player Emilio Chavaria to talk about the Valor's tennis team. And later, we'll look at one of the most significant college games from the weekend, as well as the Chiefs. We'll be right back.
you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back. I'm here with Emilio Chavarria, a member of the Valor men's tennis team. Emilio is in his junior year at Evangel, and he has a track record of being one of the strongest players on the team. Emilio, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Spencer. So talk to me about the tennis team. How are you guys doing? What's going on? Well, the tennis team is looking strong this year. We have a lot of new international students. We have um, players from Argentina, Colombia, France, uh, Serbia, a lot of the new Serbian guys, and um, Brazil too, Mexico, myself. Um, so it's a very diverse team, and it's looking really strong, yeah. So what's it like being in an environment with all those people from different countries? You know, people speak different languages, there's all these experiences. Yeah, so like practices are really interesting, because uh, so, you know, everyone gets mad at some points. So you have, you know, guys uh, shouting in Serbian, you guys ha shouting in uh, Portuguese, uh, shouting in French, shouting in Spanish. Um, so it's interesting because, uh, you, know, you know, you're in the middle of a point practicing with the guys and then they'll shout something. So you're like, was that good? Was that bad? You know, you never know. But it's, it's fun, you know, the, the intercultural, like, you know, thing that's, that is going on, not only like in the court, but out the court too, outside of the court as well. Um, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, different cultures, and getting to know each one is very interesting. And, uh, you know, you just kind of like have to respect how they are. Um, and yeah, but everyone is very different from one another, but it's nice. So you're from Mexico, so how did you first hear about Evangel? Uh, how did you decide to come here? Yeah, so um, I started doing this, uh, the whole process with an agency. Uh, this agency sent out all my um, information uh, to different coaches and stuff and universities. And so the Evangel coach, Coach Mirko, reached out to me. And we had a talk uh, on the phone, and you know he told me about like the school, about the program, and everything. So I considered it as one of my options to come here. And then eventually, when it was uh, time to choose, I, uh, you know, I just thought I was like coming here was a good thing. I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna come here. Then I eventually came, uh, and yeah, it's my third year here, so. So talk to me, how did you first get started with playing tennis? I started playing tennis relatively late compared to most players. I played when I was little, just like, you know, a uh, couple times a week, uh, like a club sport kind of. And um, it wasn't until I was, and I did not play again until I was, I think it was 15, almost, yeah, 15, 14, almost 15. And, um, and that's when I started to get into it. And um, I was so stressed because, you know, I was like relatively good at most sports, you know, soccer, basketball, whatever. And when I played tennis, I sucked. Like, I was so bad. Um, 
because tennis is such a technical sport that yes, like speed and strength matter, but it's very much technical. And um, it took me a while to fully get into it. And uh, I even did high school a different way than go to a normal high school so I could practice in the morning. Then I, then I had, um, then I did my studies and then practiced again in the afternoon. And then eventually I was able to like catch up to like all the guys at my level. And um, yeah, so that's how I got here, I guess. So you played these other sports, but what about tennis did you love so much? Um, it's just, it's so relaxing, but so stressful at the same time. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Um, it is a sport that is very demanding mentally because, you know, maybe in football or soccer, you really make everyone, someone makes a mistake, something happens, you blame it on him, you blame it on him, you blame it on the goalie. You know, there's a lot of people you can, you know, blame it on to. And um, in tennis, it's just yourself. So I look at it like every point you play is like uh, shooting a, a penalty kick. And um, really being in control of your emotions throughout the whole match. You know, matches can last up to like four hours, depending on how it is. If you're playing two best out of three sets or best out of five sets, you know how grand sums are played. So it's a very, you know, just having, having the peace in, in your mind to go through the whole match without, you know, obviously there's the ups and downs, but you know, it's trying to stay in that, that line throughout the whole match, which is really nice. <laughs> so what are some of the challenges you faced, you know, in your tennis career, um, building up your skills? Well, obviously when I started playing tournaments, it was hard. You know, something I wasn't used to, the pressure, just what I was talking about, the mental pressure of the match. And... Um, well, right now, I, I'm obviously more comfortable, but I feel like the nerves never leave. You know, you know you, you're an athlete yourself. You know the nerves before the match. Um, you know, it's just trying to get a hold of them and not let them, you know, explode. So um, the mental side of it, I think, is what I've more, uh, most um, struggled with. But obviously, the um, technical part of it is very, you know, it's you have the feel, you can, sometimes you play against players that they seem like the racket is like stuck to their hand, you know, it's just like an extension of their arm because they have so much like control of the ball and it's something like all of us, all of us tennis players like look out uh, to and want to accomplish, so. Yeah, really, really cool. Well, Emilio, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, best of luck to you and to your upcoming season. Thank you. Um, we'll look forward to seeing some more wins from you guys. Uh, coming up, we'll look at some of the college games and the Kansas City Chiefs from the weekend in the NFL. Stay tuned. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. It's a short ride from your neighborhood 
to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. The college football Heisman race is in full swing already, and there were some huge performances this weekend. Miami's quarterback Cam Ward is putting up huge numbers and has Miami undefeated through five weeks. Alabama's quarterback Jalen Milrow dominated Georgia and showed his incredible playmaking ability and has also has Alabama undefeated so far. Boise State's running back Ashton Genty already looks NFL ready and is putting up video game numbers. Through five games, he has ran for 845 yards and 13 touchdowns. And we haven't even talked about Travis Hunter, a generational athlete for Colorado who is an elite receiver and defensive back. He already has six touchdowns on offense and two interceptions on defense, a truly special player. The race for the nation's best player is going to be very exciting as we continue with the college football season. In a stunning comeback at Bryant-Denny Stadium, number four Alabama overcame blowing a 28-point lead to edge out number two Georgia 41-34. The Crimson Tide secured victory with a dramatic 75-yard touchdown pass from Jalen Milrow to freshman Ryan Williams late in the fourth quarter. Georgia had briefly taken the lead with 2.31 remaining, but Alabama immediately responded and sealed the win with Xavier Brown's end zone interception in the final 43 seconds. Milrow's historic performance included 374 passing yards, 117 rushing yards, and four total touchdowns, making him the first player in FBS history to achieve those numbers against a top five opponent. This win snapped Georgia's 42-game regular season win streak and reinforced Alabama's dominance over the Bulldogs. The Chiefs had another close game this weekend and a tough divisional matchup against the Chargers on Sunday. The Chiefs started poorly with two turnovers, a fumble from Carson Steele and an interception by Patrick Mahomes, which allowed the Chargers to go up 10-0 in the first quarter. The defending champs rallied with a 54-yard touchdown pass to rookie receiver Xavier Worthy, a field goal from Harrison Butker, and a rushing touchdown from Samaji Perrine to win 17-10 over the Chargers. The Chiefs moved to 4-0 on the season, but star receiver Rashi Rice was injured in the game and feared to have a torn ACL. The 2024 MLB regular season concluded this weekend, but the race for the National League wildcard spots has extended into Monday. The New York Mets and Atlanta Braves were set to play a crucial doubleheader to determine the final playoff berths last night. The Arizona Diamondbacks are also in contention. However, they lack the tiebreaker advantage against both the Mets and the Braves, making their path to the postseason more challenging. In the American League, the playoff field is established. The New York Yankees and Clay Cleveland Guardians have secured the top seeds, with the Baltimore Orioles, Houston Astros, Detroit Tigers, and Kansas City Royals completing the bracket. The wild card series is scheduled to begin today, October 1st, followed by the division series starting on Saturday, October 5th. Man, what another wild week What another of wild sports. week, man. Uh, Monday Night Football last, last night. Last night, the Lions and the Seahawks. Man, that was an incredible yeah, game. Was what really was the final close. score in that? 42-27. 42-27. Fireworks the whole game. It was game. insane. Yeah, yeah, Jared Goff insane had side. perfect, went perfect, 18 for 18 passes. That's pretty yeah, There was a couple of really crazy patches in there. Miami, Miami without their star quarterback. Uh, yeah, losing, Titans, to the losing to the Titans is a big loss for them. Yeah, well... When we come back, we'll have the EU TV Player of the Week. We'll also have your upcoming Evangel Games this week. We'll be right back. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. I want to 
want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. It's now time for the EU TV Sports Player of the Week. This week, it's volleyball athlete Jessica Pritchett. Evangelist Jessica Pritchett has been named the KCAC Setter of the Week after a stellar performance against 25th ranked Columbia College. Pritchett recorded 30 assists, leading the Valor volleyball team to a thrilling five set victory. The sophomore continues to shine, now leading the team with 244 assists this season. Keep an eye on this rising star as the season progresses. Congratulations, Jessica Pritchett. That is a well-deserved title. Yes, she's a rising star for sure on for the volleyball sure. team. And now let's go to upcoming games of the week. Men's and women's soccer will play Saturday, September 21st. The women at 5 p.m. versus Tabor, and the men at 7.30 versus Tabor. This will be home at Coriel Field. Next up, we have a football game Saturday, October 5th. This will be the homecoming game against Avila University. It will be held at Eagle Stadium at Nixon, in Nixon, Missouri. The women's volleyball team will play a game Wednesday, October 2nd at 7 p.m. versus College of the Ozarks. This will be home in the AG Financial Arena. October 7th and 8th, men's and women's golf fall invitational held by Evangel University. Uh, there will be two days, 9 a.m. both Monday and Tuesday, in Joplin, Missouri at Twin Hills Golf and Country Club. Go Evangel Valor! Well, that's all the time that we have for today for Sports Update. We invite you to check out the euvalormedia.com for all the latest Evangel news and media. I'm Josiah Mann. And I'm Spencer Barnes. Be sure to join us next week as we bring you the latest in sports news. For more information on Evangel Sports, go to evangelathletics.com. This has been Sports Update on EU TV.